Are you wanting to talk about streaming to Facebook Live using OBS in the year 2021? Then this video is for you. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Walt from Live Streaming Tech, and today we're going to talk about streaming to Facebook Live using OBS in the year 2021. That's right. We have finally made it to year 2021, and hopefully it is a better year than 2020. Not quite out of the darkness yet, but we're going to get there one day at a time. And what's going to help you out is this video right here. While some of you that have watched my past videos, you know I can get very long-winded and show you every little detail when it comes to some of these programs and OBS and Facebook Live and this and that. This isn't quite a beginner video, but at the same time, this isn't going to be an advanced video. This is basically going to get you going and able to start streaming to Facebook Live using OBS in the year 2021. Some things have changed, so let's go ahead and jump on into it and let's talk about it. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go open your browser. You're going to be logged into a Facebook account that you plan on streaming through. And here's the quick and easy way. There's two ways that you can do this. You can click on this live video right here, or you can act like you're going to create a post, hit the three little dots down there, and then hit live video that way. The only reason why I say click on the post is you want to kind of get used to doing it that way because uh, later on you're probably going to want to start scheduling your live events and whatnot. So for today's uh, purposes though, we're going to use the stream key. Now, here's the thing. I recommend you have used persistent stream key, which means it never changes. Obviously, I'm going to reset this <laughs> after the recording of this video because I don't want anyone capturing that. Not that they have the full thing. Also, you want to have use backup stream. What this does is if for some reason there's a slight disconnect during your live stream, it is going to keep that stream going. So at the end, when you're done with your stream, it's going to post that video so people that miss that live stream can go back and watch it. So if you have connection issues during that live stream, what's going to happen is it's going to split that video up every time that it loses connection or that there's a, uh, a slight drop in the connection. So uh, your, your viewer might turn, tune in and the first video they see at the top of the feed is going to be the last part of your video. And then maybe they scroll down a little bit and it'll be the middle part of your video and the, or your live stream. And then they scroll down a little bit more and it might be the first part of your live stream in that video. So they're going to have to go through and they're going to have to pick and choose to watch your live stream. And that's quite annoying. They want it all in one spot. They don't want to have to jump around. So I highly recommend using the backup stream. Uh, once the backup stream is added to your live video, it cannot be removed. So just know that once you do this, uh, uh, that it will not affect the stream um, if you choose not to use it, but it goes without saying that I've noticed that it will break up the video if you have a drop in connection. So without further ado, let's go ahead and we're going to copy that stream key. And obviously the use persistent stream key, as I uh, was getting ready to tell you, is that allows you to have the same key over and over and over every time you stream. So if you don't have that turned on, it's going to give you a new stream key each time, a new URL each time. Um, uh, you're going you're gonna to have to copy that over and over and over and drop it in OBS. So if you don't mind doing that, then by all means, don't use a persistent stream key. And it's, it's a, it adds a little bit more security to it as well. Uh, so you don't have to worry about somebody jumping on and streaming live on your Facebook uh, page or channel. So here's the thing. We're going to go ahead and we have OBS open. Right now I'm using 26.1.1. We're going to want to go ahead and left click on settings down at the bottom right hand corner. If you're using an older version of OBS or a newer version of OBS, the ideas and the principles are going to be pretty much the same. Now, first thing we want to click on is we want to click on stream. As you see, the service that I was using was Restream.io. It's a multi-streaming uh, service where I can stream to multiple pages, my YouTube channel, my Facebook channel, my Twitch channel, all at the same time. Um, uh, we have plenty of videos on that if you want to check that out for yourself. It's actually free to start using. Um, and actually, I think right now they're giving a $10 bonus uh, after your first stream using yeah, so definitely check that out. Uh, Livestreamingtech.com uh, uh, slash restream. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to change that service to Facebook Live. Okay. So what it's saying right here is incompatible resolution and frame rate because I have my frame rate set up to 60 frames per second in the 1080p. Since I am not a leveled up Facebook Live streamer, I am stuck at the 720. And that's exactly what it's telling me. It's saying, hey, change your stuff to 720 and, uh, frames, 30 frames per second. And it says, do you want to continue? I'm going to hit, hit yes. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the server on default. I'm going to take that stream key out and we're going to copy the new one that we have. 
You can do that just by hitting Control V as well. Okay, and down here, you can actually ignore these settings. I don't recommend that, especially if you're starting out on Facebook Live. You're gonna find out Facebook is kind of behind the curve when it comes to live streams. It is not Twitch and it is definitely not YouTube. A lot of people have complained about the potato quality. Um, so here's the thing, you can click that. It says maximum video bit rate is uh, 6,000 uh, kilobits per second. I'm gonna definitely recommend probably you sticking to about 4,000 uh, for your first stream and then upping it to 6,000. Yes, I have done up to 6,000 before. Sometimes I have no issues. Sometimes I do have issues. So it's kind of a do at your own risk. I've noticed 4,000 kilobits per second seems to be the more stable uh, when it comes to live streams on Facebook. Now the maximum audio bit rate um, is uh, 128 uh, kilobits per second. Maximum resolution once again is 720p. So that's your uh, tw uh, 1280 by 720. And then the frames per second that is 30. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit apply. We're not gonna ignore that. We're gonna go ahead now, we're gonna go to the next step which is output. Okay, so there are two things I need you to look at really closely here when we're gonna talk about this encoder. We're not gonna go into super detail, but the one thing you need to know about the two different types of encoders you have is the NVEC, which is NVIDIA graphics cards, and then you have the X264. So what the X264 is, is it uses your CPU to do the workload when it comes to encoding the live stream. However, I have it set the NVIDIA NVEC because of the fact that I want the encoding to be done by my graphics card. Now, here's the thing, if you're using a laptop or a very low quality PC that has possibly an onboard graphics card, what that means is there is not a separate card in there, is that it's actually tied into the motherboard and you're using it that way definitely you're not going to be able to do the NVEC stick to the x264 let your cpu do the work unfortunately you're going to run into issues you're going to fall you're going to find that you have some pixelation and whatnot especially on lower end pcs so the thing is is try to keep your content down to uh, uh keep it simple in other words in other words you're not going to want to be playing these games with crushing graphics and everything that's going on because of the fact that your cpu is going to have to handle that workload of not just encoding but also so playing the game, streaming, doing all that stuff as well. And is this going to be too much on it? However, if you have a separate NVIDIA graphics card, and it's a decent graphics card, so we're talking like 1060, 1070 and up, um, allow it then uh, to do the encoding for you. And here's the thing, once again, you're especially if we're talking 1060, 1070, you're not going to be able to really push high graphics when it comes to like gaming or whatnot. But if you're doing like, say, any kind of content, like talking head content, interviews, uh, reactionary videos, you're definitely not going to have to worry about that. The graphics card is definitely going to handle that workload for you and it frees the CPU up to do whatever else you need to do while doing the live stream. Uh, if you're doing gaming, just turn the game down a little bit. You don't need to have everything super cranked or whatnot uh, to actually have a decent looking stream. So those are your options when it comes to encoding. Now, here's the thing. We can go ahead and we can rescale the output. We can force basically it to go to uh, 720, which we've already selected that because basically when it realized, OBS realized we were going to Facebook Live. If you have an older version OBS though, this will not pop up for you. So this is when we're going to go ahead and we're going to change it. We're going to go ahead and we're going to skip to, uh, we're going to skip past audio and go to video for that. But really quick, rate of control. Here's the thing. A lot of people have played around with this and they've jumped in the comments and they say, wait a minute, my stream looks like garbage and I did this. Leave it at CBR. That's constant bit rate. So what that means is it's not going to be variable. It's not going to bounce around. It's going to keep that at a constant bit rate. So th th that's basically the most stable thing that you can possibly do when it comes to live streaming. Matter of fact, most of your live streaming platforms require you to do a CBR and nothing else. And this is back like, uh, you know, when we first started streaming or whatever, we could play around with that. The bit rate, once again, Facebook does allow you to go to 6,000 kilobits per second. Here's the thing, I found 4,000 kilobits per second is a little bit more stable. Use it at your own risk. Maybe start out with 4,000, bump it up to 5,000, bump it up to 6,000. Here's the catch. If your internet speed, your upload speed is not at six megabits per second, what that means is that's the 6,000 kilobits per second. If it doesn't hit that or above, do not do not set it to 6,000. You don't have that upload speed. So for instance, if you run a speed test on your end and you find out that you only have a four, me, uh, four megabits per second upload, then that means you can only max out at 4,000 kilobits per second when it comes to your OBS settings. As a matter of fact, I would even recommend dropping it down even a little bit below that if you're only getting 4,000 or the four megabits per second or 4,000 uh, kilobits per second upload. 
So the thing is, is you want a little bit of wiggle room. So for instance, say that I only had six megabits per second upload speed. I would probably drop this down to 5,000 then, but I have plenty of upload speed. And if you do too as well, go ahead and leave it at the 6,000. See what your stream looks like. Once again, though, if you're brand new to this, recommend starting at the 4,000 kilobits per second and then change it. When you change something before a live stream, only change one thing at a time. Because here's the thing. If you change five things at a time, you don't know what breaks your stream or it makes it work better. So change one thing at a time. I know we all want our streams to look beautiful and perfect when we start out. But the thing is, is it comes down to it that you want to really, truly test what your system can do, what your Internet can handle. Presets, I, leave, I like it to leave the quality and profile to high. You can change this to performance, low latency, so on and so forth. I found that these work the best for me. GPU, leave it alone and the max frames uh, as at two. Um, also the keyframe interval, leave it at auto, leave it at zero. I find that, that this, this works best for me. So we're gonna skip through past audio. We're gonna go to the resolution. Now, as you see, when we went ahead and we set that we were going to Facebook Live, it automatically forced me to go down to that 720. So let me explain this real quick. Base canvas resolution is what you see. This is on your end, this is on your side. So for instance, my monitor is cranking out 1080p. It's the 1920 by 1080. However, we only want to send 1280 by 720, the 720p to Facebook. So this is what we're telling OBS. This is the output scale. This is what Facebook is wanting from us and wanting from us only because we are not a leveled up Facebook live streamer. So you want to make sure that it is set to 720. Uh, common frames per second, this is your value. Once again, it said that we can only go up to 30, not 60 frames per second. So if you are starting out and you are new to Facebook live, this is what you're going to definitely want to set it through. All right, once you have that all selected, make sure you hit apply. It's gonna save anything that you've done previously through here. Go back, check it out once again, make sure everything's set and have fun streaming. Don't just go yet. I have one thing really quick to say that's important. Well, somewhat important. You need to check out this video right here where we talk a little bit more about Facebook Live and what you need to know. Or you can check out this video right here where YouTube recommends you check it out and give it a look. Until then, I'll see you around.